What's up guys, welcome back uh, to Road to the Two Comma Club. This is um, today's Sunday, but I'm filming for Friday's video. So let's just see how we did and then we'll talk about some general stuff. It's gonna be kind of a short video, but you know me, I like to ramble sometimes. So it might go to like five minutes, but that's the goal. We're gonna try to keep this video to five minutes. So let's just see how we did. All right, so we actually uh, made a little bit of a comeback towards the end of the day. As you can see, the Dow finished up 330 points and um, if you've been watching the vlog since the beginning, this is like per this would be a pretty rare number. But right now, with as high as the Dow has been, and with the volatility as high as it's been, this is becoming more normal for good days and bad days. Or, or you know, we're seeing huge bad days, as you've seen this past week. So I'm just happy this finished up. Although I don't really consider this like a great day. I just consider this a good day. But I, I consider it great in the sense that. Uh, it's not down because we were we had some bad days. So any day any day that's green, I'm really really excited about. But we'll talk about that later. So anyways, we finished at 225. The trades aren't showing up here, but I did um, sell my three Amazon calls, and which I'm immediately regretting because the price went back up immediately. I picked up a Roku call and a OLED call, I think. Yeah, I picked up one more OLED call, so you can see I have six here instead of five. And then I picked up another Roku call. I got in cheaper on both of them, so I'm excited about that. But at the same time, there's just so much uncertainty right now. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm considering if this week is not good, and especially if the consumer price reports and the producer price index reports are bad, uh, I'm considering selling every single call I have and just going back into stocks. I'm going to pick like a small handful of stocks that I really like, um, preferably some that have dividends like Apple, for example, and then I'm just going to sell covered calls against those. And yeah, so we're going to see what happens. But um, anyways, let's just look at the winners. Nvidia did have did come off of a good earnings report, so we did very very well with them, and um, we made money on our QQQ puts, so that kind of helped offset our losses. And then um, Universal Display actually went up, so that was really cool. And then Google, I think, had a good day from what I remember. So we'll see in the watch list uh, in a little bit. But yeah, so you can see there we had Activision Blizzard had a good day. I think they had a good earnings report, so they did well. And then we got some other winners that, you know, I wasn't expecting. So let's just scroll down to see who the losers were. And Amazon was originally my, I was down like 11 grand with Amazon. That's kind of when I panic sold. And then it came back up and I think probably would have even broke even or, or I would have made money probably if had I not, if I just held on to that. So even though we lost money today, um, we would have, if I just held Amazon, like my original plan, we would have made money. So this kind of shows you how one, one, option or one stock can really make or break your day. In this case, it was Amazon, but we had Roku did bad, um, Lamb Research did bad, and it's just, yeah. And so we lost we lost on our spy um, puts as well, so that wasn't, I was, that was a little unexpected, but whatever. Really not though, because, you know, everything went up. So really, it's not a surprise that that went down. It's probably more surprised at the other ones that we made money with. <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the watch list. So we have Riot Blockchain on top. So I was excited about that because I think I got the call for them the prior day. I can't remember um, so much going on right now, but we can see we had a good handful of stocks with very good gains today. So this this made me feel better, but we're still not out of the woods yet. There's still a lot to go, a lot that could go wrong. Um, it's just kind of 50 50 right now, to be honest. So you can see a lot of stocks did well. The stocks definitely rallied at the end of the day, although they did drop like 100, like this was at 500 points with like five minutes left to close. And within the last five minutes, 100, it, the Dow dropped 170 points. So it was really crazy. And uh, I'll post on the side of the screen. Well, actually I'll post maybe in a little bit, the recap, you'll just see how it went crazy. Um, but yeah, so here, five pages of gains, which is really exciting then six page and seven page. Okay, let's come back to me. All right, so um, basically, I'm not really looking at companies news right now because really at this point, it's not really uh, a matter of if a company is doing bad, stocks are going down, it's really, it's the whole market right now. So really the focus is on the market. Is this correction still gonna continue um, or is it gonna kinda come back soon? And I'm gonna, talk about this one article that said history suggests that the correction isn't near over as this chart demonstrates however this data was taken uh, it, it included the data from the Great Depression in 1929 which kind of skews the data a little bit but one of the quotes from this article and I'll post a link in the description below but it says and this is kind of sums up the whole thing it says there is no hard and fast rule when it comes to corrections 
And that's what can make them so terrifying when you go through one. So that's kind of really how it is. People are scared to lose money, rightfully so, me included. Um, and so when it happens, there's a lot of people who will sell out of panic, um, like I did with the Amazon call, but there's a lot of people who keep buying. Um, there's a mix and match of, of both of those, but this article kind of talks about um, how, how, on average, how long they've lasted, how long they've gone down. But they're saying, according to this data, we could it could still go down more, but then they also mentioned how it could go up pretty soon. I don't know. It kind of talks about a couple different scenarios. So, um, But it's definitely worth having a read. And another thing I want to talk about is the consumer price index and the producer price index because they're being reported this coming week. Um, the, cons the consumer price index, the CPI as they call it, um, is reporting on the February 14th and the producer price index is being reported on the 15th. Now the reason these numbers are significant is because they kind of give a general um, overview of how our economy is doing and people use that to kind of interpret whether inflation is going to be happening or not in the future. And so here's basically what I've learned so far and please fact check, do your own research definitely because I am not an expert with this stuff. But from what I've been learning, uh, basically here it comes down to this. This week, if the consumer price report comes in higher and the PPI, if the CPI and the PPI come in higher than what's expected, that's basically a signal that inflation's starting to happen and that's gonna freak people out and we're gonna have probably more selling. But if it comes lower, that means, so basically, because the consumer price index is basically an average of consumer goods that people buy. It's like a basket of goods, they say. They take the average price, and if prices are going up, that means inflation's happening. If prices are going down, that means inflation's not happening. So that's basically how it works. And so what we want is the numbers to be low, like either where it is or lower uh, than estimates, and that, that will hopefully result in more buying and hopefully can kind of spur the market to come back up. So that's what we're looking for. And we're just gonna leave it at that. Um, I'm just crossing my fingers. In terms of my own strategy, like I said before, I'm probably gonna be selling everything on terms of calls and going into stocks. If it's looking like we're gonna be, uh, because they also mentioned that article that corrections can last as short as three days or over a year. And I really do not wanna be holding calls for that long, like a year, especially because they expire in like 10 months. So I gotta adjust, I gotta adjust my strategy. I know um, some, some people have mentioned buying a Barrett call spread, which I'm still looking up how that works. And whether I can do that even on Scott Trade or how to do that on Scott Trade, uh, I really wish they would just merge with TD Ameritrade already because I know it's easier to do on Think or Swim. But, anyways, I got a lot of the work, I got a lot of thinking, a lot of planning to do. But that's what I'm going to be doing, looking to move into stocks if it's not looking good. But if it is looking good, I'll just keep what I'm doing, and we'll just go from there. So, if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And post any comments or questions below. I know you guys are all scared. I'm scared as well. Um, so we're just got to be careful, take one day at a time, see what's going on, do a lot of research, do a lot of reading, and hopefully we'll come out uh, in a good spot. Um, so we'll just see what happens. So I hope you guys had a great weekend, and we will see you tomorrow.